All right, welcome back. Today we're going for a bit of a ride and we're gonna be discussing something that I am shocked that it's taken Trek this long to do. And that is, as the title suggests, a Trek Marlin Plus. This is not theoretical, this is not shocking. This is actually gonna happen. Now, right now, it's only showing in select European countries. It's not fully released. It doesn't look like you can properly get it yet, but pricing wise, it is pretty good. You are comparing it to something like the Trek Marlin 6 and the Trek Marlin 8 for part spec, but now it's got the Bosch electric system. Now the Trek Marlin series, as this channel has grown to know, is an extremely popular one. It's honestly shocking that it's taken Trek this long to make an electric version of it. They have a few electric systems available, either Bosch or Fazua, both of which could have been modified to make a Marlin. Instead, they went with the Supercala being a high-end race one with a Fazua, and now the Powerfly series, which honestly kind of made no sense in the whole grand scheme of things, why they didn't just call it the Trek Marlin Electric or E-Marlin or Marlin Plus, as they're calling it now, I have no idea. So what makes this different? from the Powerfly? That's gonna be the big question that everyone wants to know. So interestingly enough, this one is still an aluminum frame, just like the Powerflies are. They don't come in any carbon stuff like the rails. It is simply a Trek Marlin 6 or a Trek Marlin 8 in part spec and frame. The big difference between this and a Powerfly now, between those frames, it's still powered by Bosch, although it is not the Performance Lion CX motor. Instead, they've put the Active Line Plus. Now, it's still a mid motor, so it's built into the crank and stuff like that. It's fantastic. Honestly, it's still a powerful motor. It does up to 50 Nm of torque instead of that like 85 kind of powerful that you get from the CX line. It's not that big of a difference though. Like the 50 still helps you up a lot of hills. And for the most part, the 85, is either for extreme extreme steepness or most likely is when you want to put it in little to zero effort so this one is going to be an e-bike similar to where the fuel exes are but in a marlin series and it is interesting that they didn't put the tq motor in here at that same thing all of this bike almost makes no sense that they didn't make it earlier because it does just use the old tech that has been around for a while so that 50 newton means of torque is going to be nice and powerful, is still going to work well for you. It does give the power to connect it to the e-bike flow app from Bosch, so you're going to be able to configure those settings for better battery life or more assistance, whichever way around you want to put it, you'll be able to do it. Built into the frame, so it's not as removable as the power flies, but I don't think that's that big of a deal, is a 400 watt power pack. So it's not huge, but I don't think most people are burning through it. And they do have the ability to add on that 250 watt power mall range extender from Bosch. So you're able to mount that where the bottle cage goes, plug it directly in. And now you've got a 650 watt, which is massive. Like that's more than enough for most people. Honestly, the 400 for an average rider is great. The 650 is when we're talking to people who are really pushing how far they're going. They've gone from 20K rides on like a high. Now they're doing 40, 50, 60K going just all over the place doing whatever they want. It does come with a Bosch Purion display. So that's a nice, really clean system. It looks good, tells you all the information you need, but isn't super big and bulky, which is nice. An interesting spec bump they have added is the Trek Marlin Plus is actually using a 120 millimeter suspension fork. This is slightly different depending on what version you get, whether it's a Marlin 6 or the Marlin 8 Plus. Obviously, they're both gonna be pretty good. Um, the Marlin 8 will add the air to it, whereas the Marlin 6 will not. It'll just be a straight spring. They do come in 29 inch wheels, and then with the smaller sizes being the 27 and a half. And most interestingly, which I don't believe the regular Marlins can fit, is this one has a 2.6 inch tire stock. I don't even think the regular Marlins fit that, like aftermarket. I'm pretty sure 2.35 or 2.4 is the biggest. So it's the same geometry, but they have definitely adjusted the frame design a lot. 
I do like that they've kept the Marlin logo, which was hidden on the Marlins, if you've ever seen it on the lower chainstays, and they've put it right where you can see it. Overall, the electric system is pretty low profile, like being that it's the Bosch system, it's not the smallest, but they've really integrated it well into the frame and pushed it a little higher, and you're hiding it within the aluminum itself, instead of having the motor so visible has a built-on bash guard so you're able to take a bit of protection there and being that the battery is non-removable through the side access it will be like drop down the motor and pull everything out you can get it out but being that it's not side access removable you've actually saved a huge amount of space so that kind of battery compartment down to place is actually a lot smaller than what the power flies are so although this is essentially a power fly putting in a power tube at 400 watt and a slightly smaller motor it doesn't look as big and beefy as the power flies the marlin 8 plus comes with a dropper post comes with really good brakes it will come with a 12 speed everything about it honestly i think is a fantastic feature i would be surprised i'm i just don't know where they go with the power flies obviously you have the full suspension versions they make sense the hardtail ones, I, I don't see why you'd switch to one or the other, unless you wanted right out of the bat the bigger battery, which they do come with, and the more ease of removing it. But I, I don't see that being a big deal, you know, if you're really maxing it out or don't have a really secure, warm place to store it during winter. I could see the appeal of the Powerfly, but at the price point they're talking about, like, we're around 3000 US dollars for these things. That's really aggressive. That's really good. 38 ish for the Marlin 8, 3000 for the Marlin 6. The US availability and pricing has yet to be confirmed yet, and there's not much information about this. With the Marlin series now expanding to the electric system, obviously Europe sees a huge, huge usage of electric bikes. I still don't see why they wouldn't bring this to the United States. If you can keep that price low, I think you'll get a lot of people into them and you'll see a huge influx of users. Now, where does this stand with the Powerfly is my biggest question. I just don't see how they both exist at the same time. The Marlin's geometry is fantastic. It works well on-road, it works really well off-road. You have a very respectable part spec on it. Big beefy tires now. Everything about it is the Marlin. But honestly, better. These are uh, little tweaks, 120 mil fork and bigger tires that the Marlin could easily justify. So I'd be surprised if this wasn't kind of leaning to where the Marlins are going to go anyway in the future. We're just seeing a slow bleed out of releases essentially. What do you guys think about this? I think it's cool. I think it makes more sense than the Powerfly. I think the pricing is fantastic. I like the idea of this additional battery if you need it just like the fuel exe i'm surprised they didn't just use the tq motor system i have no idea why they wouldn't maybe to keep a good relationship with bosch who knows but would you buy this over a powerfly is the removable battery that big of a deal i don't see it as huge but personally i'd rather take something which looks a little more low profile saves a bit of money and most importantly is something i've probably ridden before or i confidently know someone who's owned this this isn't like the powerfly where it's like oh this is similar to this, this is similar to this this is a track marlin geometry wise everything will be a track marlin ride wise comfort fantastic bike you know you might need to upgrade the saddle to be a little comfier because as usual they put on those tiny little uncomfy ones but you can do anything and everything with this. With all the rack mounts it's got, bottle cage mounts, you're gonna be able to load it up to do exactly what you need, whether that's on-road commuting or off-road riding. Adding in that electric just makes perfect sense to me. And I really think Trek's gonna do well with this one. Shocked that they haven't done this before, but you know, everyone takes time to figure out their own things. And obviously Powerfly sounds more fancy, it sounds more different so it's easier to market to so i understand why they maybe went for a different name and then slowly realize that most people are just looking for an electric marlin 
and that's all they want. They've had that bike, they've relied on that bike. You can find tons of YouTube videos, tons of reviews on the Trek Marlin. It really makes a lot of sense to me to build a really specific purpose-built Trek Marlin Plus like they have, as opposed to building a really different object with the power flies. All right, hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully we'll get more news on this and more leaks from it. And we'll find out if it's coming to US or North America anytime soon. Looks like you might still be able to order it or pre-order it. Talk to your Trek dealers in Europe already. But otherwise, hope you enjoyed the ride and good luck guys. Thanks.